Are you confused with all the misinformation about COVID-19? Are you unsure what you should be doing right now to prepare? Hi, I'm Matthew Renzi, data science consultant, author, and public speaker. I've been asked by many of my friends, family, and clients for advice on how they should be handling the COVID-19 pandemic. As a data science consultant, many people have come to trust my evidence-based, rational decision-making approach as a valuable source of information. So to help all of you that are currently confused about what to believe or unsure what to do next, I've created this video to summarize the five things that you should be doing right now to prepare for the COVID-19 pandemic. Step one, educate yourself from reliable sources. There's currently a tremendous amount of misinformation floating around the web and social media regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. In addition, our highly politicized news sources have exaggerated some facts and downplayed other more important facts. This has led to a highly distorted view of the situation compared to the reality of things. First, you need to educate yourself about the COVID-19 pandemic from reliable sources. These include the World Health Organization, the Centers for Disease Control, and medical experts with a background in epidemiology. These do not include entertainment news sources, politically biased media sources, or social media. Focus on the scientific evidence and the story that the data are currently telling. The real picture becomes very clear once you have the right information. Step two, act now to flatten the curve. The biggest problem we face is the potential of overloading our healthcare system with a flood of sick patients. While roughly 80% of COVID-19 cases are mild, 20% require hospitalization. Of those 20% hospitalized, roughly 5% require intensive care. Multiply these numbers by millions of people and you have a national healthcare emergency on your hands. Patient survival rates are mostly dependent on age and the presence of underlying health conditions. However, for those in the high-risk category, their survival rate largely depends on access to proper medical care. If the hospitals become overwhelmed, these high-risk patients will not have access to supplemental oxygen, ventilators, doctors, or nurses. As a result, many more people will likely die if the hospitals become overwhelmed. The best thing we can do right now is to take proactive measures to flatten the curve. Exponential growth curves like the spread of the COVID-19 virus start off slow, but then explode very rapidly. As a result, we need to be proactive to reduce the trajectory of this exponential growth curve. By flattening the curve, we slow the spread of the virus and reduce the likelihood of overwhelming our medical infrastructure. This is the single most important thing that we can do right now to minimize the overall death toll and damage to our society. Every day we wait to take action now means literally thousands more lives will be lost a few weeks from now. Step three, do your part to save lives. Many of us feel helpless in all of this. We don't think that there's anything that one person can do to make a significant impact on the outcome of this situation. However, please know that you have a major role to play in this historic world event. You can save real human lives by doing your part to flatten the growth curve of this pandemic. In addition, there are many people that are in the low risk category that aren't concerned about getting seriously ill or dying from this virus. However, you need to realize that this isn't about you. This is about helping save the lives of the 20% of the population in the high risk category. They need your help right now to slow the spread of the virus so the healthcare system won't be overwhelmed and they can get the medical care necessary to save their lives. So how do we flatten the curve? Well, there are a few key evidence-based recommendations from the experts. First, stay home if possible to avoid spreading the virus. Second, avoid gatherings of 10 or more people. Third, keep a distance of at least six feet from other people in public. Fourth, wash your hands regularly with soap and water for 20 seconds. Fifth, avoid touching your face as much as possible. And finally, if you show any symptoms, it is imperative that you self-quarantine to avoid spreading the virus to others. The CDC has a full list of these recommendations at the URL below. When you combine all of our individual proactive measures, it will have a tremendous impact on the long-term outcome of this pandemic. Step four, be prepared but don't hoard. Over the past few days, you've almost certainly noticed an absence of some kinds of foods, beverages, and dry goods at your local grocery store. Checkout lines have likely gotten much longer as well. Some people are stocking up on just a few extra items in the event that they get quarantined for a couple of days, while others appear to be stockpiling toilet paper in preparation for a zombie apocalypse. It's generally good advice to have a reasonable supply of shelf-stable food and supplies on hand in the event of a short-term emergency. In addition, by minimizing the number of trips you need to take to the grocery store over the next few weeks, you'll reduce the likelihood of spreading the virus. However, it's wasteful and economically disruptive to hoard months' worth of food and supplies. In addition, hoarding medical supplies creates very dangerous situations for the medical professionals who desperately need them to treat patients. Step five, keep calm and stay sane. 
Things are going to be very unusual for the next few months. Schools will be closed, some businesses will be closed, vacations will be canceled, weddings will be postponed, and much more. Most of us have not yet lived through a pandemic of this nature in our lifetimes, so you need to expect significant disruptions to normal life in the next few months. However, please remember that even during the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918, the lights still stayed on, water kept running, and food was still available. In addition, even after the Great Depression, the stock markets recovered, unemployment went down, and things returned to normal. It's quite safe to assume that this situation will be the same in the end. In the meantime, please do what you can to make life at home feel as normal as possible for you and your family. Maintaining routines, even from home, is very important for a psychological sense of security. In addition, be sure to stay in contact with your family, friends, neighbors, and coworkers. Just be sure to do it remotely in the comfort of your own home. We have lots of telecommunication technologies available now to make this possible. So, to summarize, the five things you should be doing right now to handle the COVID-19 pandemic are educate yourself from reliable sources, act now to flatten the curve, do your part to save lives, be prepared but don't hoard, and keep calm and stay sane. When all is said and done, my hope is that this experience will teach our society an important lesson in what we value most in our lives, what the real threats are in our world, and how we should allocate resources to improve the lives of every creature on this planet. Ultimately, I hope we will become more resilient as individuals, as businesses, as a society, and as a planet as a result of this experience. In the meantime, however, please remember that we're all in this together. Thank you.